Hello everyone, I'm Mark McCurgo and I'm here today to celebrate the publication of this book, The Last Potter of Blackburn, with the author, Lee Cartledge, who's also on the call with us. Hi Lee. Hello Mark. It's wonderful you could join us. Uh, so Lee, you, you're the author of this book, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you came to write it and then I'll tell everyone what's my involvement with it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, well, um, really, uh, the book started uh, in 1977. Um, my mum set up a pottery in Bentham in North Yorkshire. Uh, and I think it was in the summer of 1977, this old guy came into the pottery in his 80s at the time, and uh, he had his grandchildren with him. And he announced that he was called Richard Bateson, and he was the last potter of Blackburton, and would he mind borrowing my mother's pottery wheel so we could show his children, his grandchildren what he used to do when he was working in in the pottery industry of Burton and Lonsdale. Uh, so that happened in 1977 and then for the for the for, for months afterwards he would come into the pottery and he would he would throw and he actually ended up teaching my mum how to throw pots on the wheel and my mum has obviously ended up teaching me how to throw pots on the wheel. Uh, but at the time, in 1977, I would have only been nine years old, so I was a little bit young to really appreciate it. Uh, and it really wasn't until I was 18 or 19 when I was doing a degree in 3D design at Sunderland Polytechnic, and I was kind of looking for a, a choice of what to do for my thesis, that my mother suggested to me, she said, well, why don't you go and see Richard Bateson uh, in Burton, and you can maybe do your thesis on the Burton and Lonsdale pottery industry. So that's what I did. I did my thesis on the Burton and Lonsdale pottery industry. Uh, and it kind of introduced me to a lot, uh, to, obviously introduced me to Richard Bateson, who, who, who was the main subject of the book, but it introduced me to uh, Richard's son, Henry, who knew a lot about the potteries, and in turn, Richard's other son, John, who knew a lot about the potteries. And I kind of befriended them really. Uh, and over the next 20, 30 years or so, uh, I would fairly regularly see them. Uh, John came on an annual pilgrimage to Ingleton and he would always stop in at Bentham Pottery then. So slowly I, I, began, to, um, I began to unwrap the whole life story of Richard Bateson. Um, and one of the things that I didn't realise the significance of when I was writing my thesis is that Richard went to London to teach pottery he taught throwing at the Royal College of Art and the Central School of Arts and Crafts and Wimbledon College of Art and I hadn't realised really how that came about uh, and it was all due to a twist of fate caused by the Second World War uh, and this guy that, that Richard Bateson who, who had been who had started as essentially a factory worker at his dad's uh, pottery in 1907 at the age of 13 had actually managed to get into the most prestigious art schools in the country as a teacher. Uh, so it's, it was a fascinating story really and it's been one I've been wanting to tell for the last 20 years and of course Covid-19 comes on the scene and all of a sudden I've not quite got as many orders to make as I've had before and I've not got as much teaching to do. So it was just an ideal opportunity for me to sit down and just spend a little bit of time putting pen to paper and to try and put together all the stories that John Bateson and um, Henry Bateson and Richard Bateson had been telling me all these years. So that, that's really how it came about. That's the evolution. Uh, the, the last that's fantastic. Of Th thank you. And so, so the reason I'm here, everybody, is that Richard Bateson was my grandfather. Uh, and so my mother was Margaret Bateson and uh, uh, my grandfather was Richard Bateson. And I'm absolutely thrilled that Lee has written this super book uh, and I've been able to support the publication of it and the book production and everything. Uh, and uh, it's out now. And I never really knew my grandfather as a sort of active potter. Of course, I knew he'd been a potter and I knew he'd been a teacher, but I, he retired in about the, the mid sixties when I was about five. So I never really saw him work. Uh, and, um, uh, the extent to which he'd been influential uh, in, in the pottery world in the 1940s and 50s uh, was not, I didn't really know that until Lee came along with the book. And of course, there's lots and lots of stories as well from 
the, the, the first half of the 20th century, when Richard was working and then running potteries in the Burton in Lonsdale area. Um, so I've learned a huge amount uh, through, uh, through reading this book, which I probably should have known, but I, you, know, I, you don't ask questions as a teenager like that. Um, and it's been a, a real education for me. And it's a fascinating story. It's, it, 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 there's lots of history in here. There's lots of fun. There's lots of you know, inside stories of how the potteries worked uh, in the first half of the 20th century in Burnley Lonsdale, which is a country pottery area. And it's not quite the same as Stoke-on-Trent, which is this vast industrial you know, complex. Um, but Burton, being on the, uh, in the corner of La uh, Yorkshire, Lancashire and Cumbria, really, up in that corner between the dales and the lakes, as people sometimes say up there, was, had been a pottery village for two or three hundred years. And it all went along and, and ran out and stopped finally in 1944 when my grandfather couldn't carry on. And then he went on to London and to teaching, as, uh, uh, as Lee says. So Lee, as I say, I think it's a terrific book. Um, why, why is it interesting today, do you think? Why should people read this today? Um, well, I think it's all about the legacy of uh, the Burton and Lonsdale pottery industry, really, uh, because when Richard's business went out of business in 1944, that could well have been the end of the story. Uh, but it didn't, because due to a twist of fate, um, basically what happened, just to explain that very briefly, is that uh, during the Second World War, the Royal College of Art were evacuated to Ambleside. And whilst they were evacuated to Ambleside, they had no means of making pots or firing pots. So they looked for a pottery in the vicinity of Ambleside and they found Richard's a pottery in Burton in Lonsdale. And so for the duration of the war, Royal College of Art students came to Waterside Pottery in Burton and Richard Bates and taught them how to throw and he fired pots for them as well, which was great. But he obviously did a very good job of it because uh, when the Royal College moved back to London uh, and coinciding with the uh, Waterside Pottery going bankrupt, which was all co coincidental, um, they telegrammed him and asked him if he, if, if he would come and work as a throwing tutor for him at the Royal College of Art. So the legacy of the Burton uh, Potteries, which could have ended with Richard Bateson in 1944, he went on to teach um, teach the, um, the studio potters, people like Alan Kager Smith, David Frith, these are, these are highly rated potters today. So he basically passed on, the, the country legacy of Burton and Lonsdale was passed on to other potters, which is why it's so important to tell really. And obviously <laughs> passed to my mum as well. <laughs> and yes, and you, you and your mum are keeping the tradition going, although a mile down the road perhaps from, from where they used to be. Yeah, we're close uh, to Burton. <laughs> And, and, so, and it is interesting that, that I didn't know this again, but uh, my grandfather in the 30s started producing some very imaginative and interesting pottery and was really almost a studio potter before, before the term had been invented. And so the industry was moving from throwing simple jars for storage use and domestic use. And he was making efforts to make something more interesting than that. And he went to the Royal show and then it, uh, to a show in Paris where he was awarded a certificate in the 1930s, uh, which is quite extraordinary really for a, for a, uh, a man from, you know, from a very, very rural north of England to be making that sort of impact even, even back then. I would agree with that, Mark. Um, and I think if he could have kept it small scale, and kind of stayed doing what he was doing initially at Bridge End Pottery, uh, that after the Second World War, I suspect the studio potters and the Bernard Leeches uh, of the world would have noticed uh, Richard Bateson. And I think they would have flocked to Bridge End Pottery to witness uh, the throwing legend that he was and also <laughs> to buy his pots. Yes, well, one of the nice things about this book is that you've, you've written up in an epilogue kind of how Burton might have kept going. And I think that's one of the most interesting parts of the book is with your expertise, looking at back into the second half of the 20th century and looking at other country properties that did for a while survive and think about how all that might have happened. And we also have a, in a final appendix to the book is Richard Bateson's own words of how to throw, which he left as part of a, a short memoir that he wrote 
Uh, and I think it's really great that we have his words in the book uh, as well as uh, as well as yours. I would agree. I think I think uh, I think Richard's um, words on throwing are very eloquent and the very well thought through and it could only have been written by someone that really really knew the material and he did well so he, he, everyone the book is called the last potter of black burton richard bates and pottery to burton in lonsdale it's on sale now in amazon there'll be a link underneath this video to where you go it's only 6.99 100 pages and lots and lots of photographs and different uh, there's lee with a with a great big pot thrown by richard bates in the 19. 30s um, photographs and uh, it's very well very well put together and uh, a real super addition to the literature about pottery the literature about rural industry becoming rural arts in a way uh, and also the history of pottery in the northwest and so all of those are very good reasons to uh, to spend 6.99 on this excellent book if you live near lee uh, in uh, at Bentham Pottery, uh, up near Burton in Lonsdale, then he'll be having copies to sell, I'm sure, uh, in his shop, which you should also go and visit because he's got some super pots, super pots there. And um, so, so Jenny's just trying to tell me something. Uh, and of course, Lee can set some sign them for you. I can sign them for you, the it? yeah. I get, I'll even give you a tour of the pottery if you turn up. <laughs> Uh, the police are under us on that, on that <laughs> sort of thing. So, uh, anyway, uh, so the last question about that, fantastic. Lee, thank you so much from, on behalf of me and my family for, for, the, for all the interest and all the work you've put into to our <laughs> grandfather and his, uh, and his life. It's an absolute pleasure to have, have this document, you know, to pass on to future generations as well, as well as educate and entertain everyone today. Um, so I am going to... Oh, Lee, do you want to say something? I'm going to open a champagne in a minute to celebrate. It's been an absolute pleasure working with you, Mark, really. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed the whole experience. Well, because I, I have experience in, in book production and putting books together, folks. So that's been my role. Lee's done all the hard work and writing and research and so forth. And I've been able to put my skills in, in making books. And people, we know people who do that. And we do that for our own business and our other topics. So my contribution has been in that. So it's time to open champagne, and what better to open a way to open a bottle of champagne than with a saw? Well, why wouldn't you, Mark? And <laughs> you have to have one lying around. This is a Napoleonic sword. It's a replica, actually, uh, of a Napoleonic sword. And I am going to endeavour now <laughs> to find the seam of the bottle. I need to find the seam of the bottle. There we go. I'm going to endeavour to open this. I hope bottle. this isn't going to be the end of the last publisher of uh, Edinburgh. Yeah. <laughs> so with a bit of luck, I'm going to run the sword up the neck, and the top will come. The whole, the glass top, and the cork will come off. Let's see. One, two, three. Yay! 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 <laughs> so here's two down there. Here's to the success of the last poster of Blackburn. Lee, I'm sorry we can't do this together at the moment. Yeah, it's a great one show. of the days, we're definitely going to get together and have a glass. They've got their glasses. They've got their glasses. So I'll pour one here for, for Jenny. And uh, one here for me. Is Jenny there? Is, is Jenny yes, there? Yes, she is. Yeah. Do you want to say, a few, say hello, Jenny? And hello, say a few hello, words? Mark. I think you've been the highlight of Lee's lockdown. <laughs> well, I'm very, I'm very delighted to, to play that role. <laughs> so, let's have a toast. To Richard Bateson. Last daughter of Blackburn. Yeah. Richard Bateson. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Everybody. Cheers. <laughs> oh, there we go. Just a job. So, thanks, everyone. Uh, the link to buy the book is underneath this recording. Thank you again, Lee and Jenny. Uh, and looking forward to uh, many more trips to Burton and to see you uh, at the pottery. Absolutely, Mark. And, and thanks everyone for watching. Thank you. So, cheers for now. Cheers. 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 <laughs>